The PRC has worked to shut the 23 million people of Taiwan also engaged in disinformation and malign influence campaigns that are designed to cast doubts on our institutions and test weaknesses in our democracy. I want to thank President Weinstein, Mr. Waters, and your colleagues for holding this virtual gala. I am grateful that Hudson hosted me in August, together with the Center for American Progress. You also welcome Vice President William Lai during his visit to Washington, D.C. in February. Both of us appreciated the opportunities to exchange views on the regional situation that we face. History has a tendency of repeating itself. It is becoming increasingly clear that today, the world is once again being faced with fundamental questions of freedom or authoritarianism. As we look at Hong Kong, we see what was one of the Asia's most free and prosperous cities descent into fear, anxiety, and instability. We are also watching with alarm the increasing provocation from across the Taiwan Strait. PLA fighter jets and naval ships now cross the median line of the strait with regularity, raising the risk of accidents and miscalculations. The PRC has worked to shut the 23 million people of Taiwan out of international organizations. Despite our legitimate request to be included on matters of health, aviation safety, international police cooperation, climate change, and more. They are also engaged in disinformation and malign influence campaigns that are designed to cast doubts on our institutions and test weaknesses in our democracy. I want to be clear. We do not desire this sort of cross-strait relationship. What we seek is constructive cross-strait dialogue in order to peacefully address differences of opinion and perspectives without the need for preconditions. We see a necessity for both sides to find a way to coexist peacefully based on mutual respect, goodwill, and understanding. This has been the basis of my cross-strait policy, as it is a position that best serves the interests of peace and stability in the region. While the 23 million people of Taiwan do not want to live in a state of permanent antagonism, we are also determined to safeguard our freedoms and way of life. We have made it a priority to strengthen our most valuable asset, that is democracy. We have implemented responsible ways to tackle disinformation through openness and transparency. New legislation was passed to respond to PRC's malign influence in our politics. Together with the US and other international partners, we are also engaged on issues ranging from media literacy to accountable governance. These actions signal to all across the region about the resiliency of our democratic processes. Taiwan is determined to take a different path forward. In order to do so, we must also be able to deter military adventurism and defend ourselves in the face of growing military tensions. Over the past four years, I have acted on my commitments to increase our defense budget, erasing years of painful cutbacks. We expect that by next year, our regular defense spending will reach 14.9 billion US dollars, accounting for more than 2.2% of our GDP. I am determined to see this trend continue. But more important than this, is to ensure that we are making investments in the right equipment and training. I appreciate the U.S. has made available new fighter jets as well as new asymmetric capabilities in line with our requests. We are also devoting greater focus towards B-52 
building up domestic defense industries. For a long time, Taiwan's economy has remained stagnant. Wages failed to grow, and our global competitiveness continued to slip. As a consequence of this, talent and capital gradually left our shores for better opportunities abroad. Our trade became increasingly dependent on actors that may not have our best interests at heart. I am pleased to say that this is no longer the case. As a result of the economic and regulatory reforms we have put into place, we have regained our leadership position among us, the four Asian tigers. We have continued to maintain positive economic momentum despite the global downturn.